Chapter 141, Oddball Little Master. Stuart Chang's heart turned stern, and he nodded in understanding. After only a few words, he could tell that the little miss in front of him might be young but she appeared to be the one in charge of this group. Miss, sir, madam, let this old servant show you this residence. Stuart Chang respectfully led them inside the house. As soon as they entered, there was a small parterre. The whole garden was lusciously green and truly well taken care of, a faint fragrance wafting toward their noses. Wise Ikin immediately liked this estate at first glance. A middle-aged gardener was standing next to the parterre. He rubbed his hands, ill at ease, and walked up to make obeisance. My lords, this is the gardener. Old Bai. He isn't good with words but is very skillful at taking care of plants. Chang Zai hastily spoke some good words on the gardener's behalf. He could tell from earlier that little miss intend intentions to keep the servants. It's truly quite good. Old Bai, do you maintain this whole yard yourself? Wise Ikin commented with a smile. These plants are well taken care of. Seeing that her mother was happy, Kiao Mu looked back and told Chang Zai, he can stay. Chang Zai was overjoyed and hurriedly gave old Bai a look. The middle-aged man quickly bowed. Thank you, miss. As for Kie Aozongxing and the others, they were surprised and felt both amused and exasperated. It turned out their cold child originally wanted to evict these servants. Without saying, if you asked her, she would certainly answer. A waste of food and also useless, keep them for what? I'm already being extremely generous by not making them pay for board and lodging. Shao Yao secretly wiped some tears in the back. How bitter. Back then, Ao Yi and she suffered so much to follow little lord. Chang Zai led them through the corridor and introduced, there are six rooms here. How do you plan to distribute them, sir? Yao Zongbin could not get used to the sir coming from this old servant's mouth. He scratched his nose and chuckled in embarrassment. Yao Kiao you distribute them. Besides these six rooms, are there more in the back? Kiao Mu asked. In the rear part of the court, there is a small arched door. If you go through it, there's a small garden and a two-level building with four livable rooms in it. Kiao Mu nodded and turned to speak to Kiao Zongxing. Second uncle, you and elderly lady will live here. My parents and I will live in the building. Xiao Yao automatically stood next to Kiao Mu. You live downstairs. Kiao Mu glanced at Xiao Yao. Xiao Yao felt like Miss Voice was like Heaven's chorus. She was actually prepared to sleep in the bushes or the garden. I have my own room. Kiao who happily ran into a room like a loose cannon. Kiao Mu turned to look at Chang Zai. What about that elderly female cleaning servant? Call her over. From now on, besides cleaning, have her attend to elderly lady. It doesn't need to be too troublesome, three meals a day and some attending will do. Miss, you are truly unparticular. Chang Zai's lips secretly twitched. What affluent family would order a low-level elderly female servant to personally serve an old madam? Only Miss Wood. Kiao Mu glanced at Chang Zai and rapidly waved her hand. As small households aren't that particular as long as the task is done. Quickly, the low-level elderly female servant named Mother Xu appeared in front of the Kiao family. Without speaking more than three sentences, Kiao Mu waved her hand and had Mother Xu carry elderly lady Kiao into the house to settle. And so, Kiao Mu's family settled in Xijiu City. As for a certain crown prince, he spent the past two days in extreme leisure. The entire Guanlin city being under lockdown had nothing much to do with him, so the Lord locked himself inside the secret room of Eastern Palace and disappeared for more than a day. His subordinates were fine, but it caused the old King of Mo Kingdom a mouthful of blisters from his worry and urgency. Chapter 142 the willful prince. The group of senior officials all had matching worried frowns that matched the King of Mo Kingdoms. His Highness the Crown Prince slacking off in his work was truly worrisome. This matter had to be traced back to the day that the Crown Prince returned to the capital. The Crown Prince had sent someone to quell the disturbance caused by the mutated corpse of the royal maid in Noble Consort Zheng's palace. The matter was originally fine, and Noble Consort Zheng's problem was successfully dealt with in a turn of events. However, the matter did not end there. Noble Consort Zheng went to the old king and complained about it with profuse weeping. She said that the people that the crown prince sent were very rude and unreasonable and impertinently searched her palace after taking care of the monster. 
turning it upside down and knocking over many valuable items, etc etc etc. She pulled the old king with her to demand compensation from the crown prince. When the crown prince went to the king's study to report about the zombies, the king coldly reprimanded the crown prince for disrespecting his concubine mother and being overly arrogant and so on. Wonderful, it was like stabbing a hornet's nest. His Highness the Crown Prince, who might look easygoing, gentle, and refined but was actually frank to the point of making people bristle with anger, not only insulted the king on the spot but also left with a flick of his sleeves and went into seclusion. He then ignored all visitors from there on out. That night, noble consort Jing's Sofra Flower Palace was the subject of a tragic robbery. Although there were not any clues, everyone, including the old king, were well aware that the crown prince was the culprit of this cruel event. The king was very angry, but this was trouble caused by his son, so he had to take the blame. Although he would berate this exceptionally outstanding son of his occasionally, he knew that only the crown prince was capable of great things and could inherit the throne of Mo Kingdom. Since the king could not bear to punish the crown prince, he had no choice but to take the blame silently. Later, he was drowned by noble consort Zheng's tears and anger, but he could merely benevolently pacify her. Thankfully, however, before the crown prince went into retreat, he had already ordered the whole city to enter lockdown. Over these past two days, the captain of the Dragon Saliva Guard, Yuxu, had been leading people to investigate all the families who had previously held a burial in the city. As for inside the palace it was a long story, since the crown prince did not clearly state that the dragon saliva guard was responsible for the safety of the entire royal palace, the dragon saliva guard only guarded the areas around the eastern palace and central palace, ignoring the other places completely. The 3000 people under the commander of the royal guard were simply insufficient, and so, Something would go wrong over here in the morning and trouble would stir over there in the afternoon. The commander of the royal guard, Huey Feng, felt highly wrung out and really wanted to cry from leading the royal guards running all over the palace with duties piled up to their ears. During the morning court, an official from the eldest prince's party jumped out and admonished the crown prince for being incapable and jointly impeached his highness the crown prince with several other major officials. The officials from the eastern palace's party one nearly went into a full out brawl with the eldest prince's party. They started arguing with flushed faces in the throne room and wished for nothing more than to start throwing punches and kicks nearly angering the king into vomiting blood. After adjourning the court with an angry flick of his sleeves, the king drew the beautiful noble consort Zheng to the royal gardens and intended to take a walk there while relaxing with a beautiful woman. Yet, a zombie abruptly jumped out of the pond and glomped noble consort Zheng, squeezing her neck while screaming. It almost frightened the old king to death. This matter was particularly serious. After witnessing the viciousness of a zombie firsthand, the old king finally understood the danger behind corpses mutating into zombies. He wanted to find his son to discuss this matter, but his son was in seclusion and would not come out, so his only option was to summon his officials to conjure up a plan. This is all noble consort Zheng's fault. If it weren't for noble consort Zheng creating something from nothing and causing his highness the crown prince to go into seclusion from anger, then why would things devolve into this? Not many people would dare to say this. The speaker just happened to be the queen's younger brother, the Marquis of Stability, Zhasheng. The king wanted to berate him, but he could not say anything when faced with his queen's brother's righteous face. Zhasheng was indeed full of righteousness. In this subject's view, noble consort Zheng should be punished with thirty flogs to give justice to his highness the crown prince. Everyone grew silent. The Marquis of Stability was truly willing to say anything. Look at how green the king's face turned. Chapter 143, The Black-Hearted Crown Prince. The Marquis of Jiajing I was on the king's side, and his usual, normal function was to gloss over something. One look from the king and the Marquis of Jiajing quickly went up to stop the Marquis of Stability with a contrite smile. Marquis Zhao, that's not entirely true. Her Highness Noble Consort Zheng also experienced quite a fright today and is still sick. Well deserved. 
it was better off unmentioned since Zhao Sheng's fury lit up immediately, everyone knows that there are mutating corpses everywhere so it's unsafe outside. Why did she have to go and take some walk in the garden with his majesty? Couldn't she have gone any other day? No, she just had to choose these chaotic days to go. If it weren't for her, would his majesty suffer a fright? Would his majesty's holy visage be damaged subsequently? Her, her motive is execrable. As Zhao Sheng said this, he cupped his hands toward the king and indicated for everyone to go look at the blisters by the king's mouth. He then continued berating noble consort Zheng without any mercy. The king was incredibly indignant. These blisters were caused by his unfilial son. Everyone knew about the Marquis of Stability's merciless speech. Back then, the king himself commended this official for being upright and plain spoken and willing to speak forthrightly. He even personally wrote a loyal and righteous plaque for him. However, at this current moment, he really wanted to kill him. The other officials all kept their heads down and stayed silent. How could they have the guts to interrupt the younger brother of the queen while he was berating noble consort Sheng? Seeing everyone playing possum, the old king got even angrier. All of you, go and keep requesting the crown prince to come out of seclusion. The king lividly flicked his sleeves and left his face disgruntled. Don't stop until you succeed. If the crown prince doesn't come out, then stay there. Don't even think about leaving. The officials all looked at each other with dismay and dread. Fook me. This this was called the lucky's suffering when devils fight. The king could not put down his own pride, so he was forcing his poor subjects to go instead. This was very repressive. What was more disheartening was that no one could compare to how black-hearted the crown prince was. They had entered the eastern palace for a long time, but they did not get even a single cup of tea. When the coming and going junior eunuchs and junior royal maids saw the officials, they all saluted with utmost formality, but then they would go on and do their own business without looking at them completely ignoring them unfortunate souls. Marquis of Stability an official looked at Zhao Sheng with a chagrined face. Zhao Sheng waved his hand and scoffed. You reap what you sow. This Marquis still has to go to Central Palace to visit Her Majesty. Stay here and continue inviting the Crown Prince to come out of seclusion. Humphrey, after saying that, he also flicked his sleeves and left ditching the group of unfortunate souls who looked at each other at a loss for words. Marquis of Stability, your preemptive move is too fake, isn't it? While the officials were sitting outside grievously with an immutable worried frown, the crown prince was hiding inside the secret room in his bedchamber. He laid on the soft couch against the window and read the book in his hand. A small and exquisite bronze tripod cauldron about the length of half an arm floated in the air with scarlet flames enveloping its bottom. Occasionally, the lid of the cauldron would shoot up due to air streams and make clanging noises. The youth with sword brows and bright A's, Q I think watched the bronze cauldron silently. It was not until the door to the secret room opened that Hugh Ifing looked away and glanced at the entrance. A strong and healthy youth in black entered. There was an ornate mahogany lotus flower embroidered on his chest. Take a drink the crown prince did not look up, his fingers flipping to another page. The eyes of the youth who entered brightened, and he hurriedly walked to the table and drank from the teacup in one gulp. Q Ifing glanced at him with a curl of his lips. How is it? The crown prince's question was apropos of nothing, but the youth immediately understood and ran forward with a smile. Chapter 144, The Father Tricking Crown Prince Your Highness may rest peacefully. This subordinate secretly led people to thoroughly search every single corner of the palace right and left top and bottom. There won't be any more hidden zombies. H.N. The crown prince calmly made a noise in response and flicked one of his sleeves. Immediately, a line of fire shot inside the bronze cauldron, promptly suppressing the thing that was trying its best to break free from inside. Clanging noises continued emitting from the cauldron, but the crown prince did not grace it with a single look. In truth, when the crown prince ordered Juxu to inspect the city, he had also ordered Hidden Flower to search for possible dangers in every corner of the palace. For Empress Zhao's sake, the Crown Prince would not seriously stand by and do nothing. Has Hidden Current returned yet? The Crown Prince put down his book and looked up at the captain of the Hidden Pavilion, Hidden Flower. He was the youth with a lotus flower embroidered on his chest. He's waiting outside the corner of Hidden Flower's mouth silently twitched. Cough. 
how about he washes up before coming in to see your highness? No need, let him enter, the crown prince indifferently spoke, and the door to the secret room opened in correspondence. What entered was a zombie whose long, dried up hair was sagging down in separate locks when he suddenly started jumping inside. As he jumped, the rotting flesh hanging from his body dropped onto the floor with a splatter, eliciting an extremely distasteful gaze from Hugh Ifing. My lord. Their zombie youth reached out to sweep the dry hair draped over his face to the side and smiled wretchedly at the crown prince, revealing a mouthful of ghastly teeth. Even someone as calm and collected as the crown prince could not resist looking away. Such an ugly look. My lord, I have been escaping for an entire day. Those royal guards have been hunting me down to kill me. It's been tragic for me. In truth, my original makeup was quite decent but after trudging through water and treading on fire, even the most perfect makeup would turn appalling. Their zombie youth defended himself but shrank back in fright after a glare from Hidden Flower. Get cleaned up before returning, Hidden Flower reprimanded his underling from the hidden pavilion, and Hidden Current pouted before fleeing with his tail between his legs. The crown prince extended a clean and slender hand, and Hugh Ifing instantly handed him a cup of tea. Then let noble consort Zheng rest in bed longer. It can allow royal mother some peace and quiet to a sentence from this lord determined the tragic fate of noble consort Zheng's upcoming month. Noble consort Zheng had truly caused too much racket recently. If not for that, he would not have bothered to torment her. She was merely an insignificant favored consort. Yet, she did not act like a favored consort. As if it was not enough that she strutted around like a peacock in the harem, she even tried to cause trouble for him, simply disturbing him for no good reason. The crown prince was well aware of his royal father's character. Not only was he easily influenced but he typically did not have many opinions as well. His fondness for beauties could be ignored but not his constant muddle-headedness and ignorance. The crown prince wanted to say that he was also very exasperated to have been given a father like this. Hence, in order to make his father attach importance to the zombies, the crown prince wrote, directed, and cast the actors himself for the giant show in the royal gardens. It could be imagined how entertaining the act was when the zombie acted by hidden current abruptly leapt out of the gardens bond and pounced on noble consort Sheng choking her to death. A certain son who had exhausted himself for his father sighed and put down the cup in his hand. Suddenly, his global shifted, and the crown prince took out a messenger jade talisman from his lapels. He gently slid his fingers over the surface and rows of small characters clearly and swiftly surfaced. Hidden Flower and Hugh Ifin calmly walked to the crown prince's side and turned their gazes onto the jade talisman. Chapter 145 beguiling performed. There was a voluminous amount of words written on the jade talisman, but the crown prince's gaze was glued to the line a youth from daybreak sect strongly insisted on giving a kiss to Miss Kiao, but Miss Kiao adamantly refused and rolled her eyes at him. These words felt comical no matter how they looked at it. But the duo could not laugh. Seeing the crown prince's face devoid of any expression, Hidden Flower and Hugh Ifing both felt an incoming storm looming over them. A youth from daybreak sect? The crown prince nonchalantly uttered those words, his voice incomparably gentle and his features unmoving. However, Hidden Flower and Hugh Ifing both involuntarily shuddered. Bang! The teacup in the crown prince's hand turned into powder in the blink of an eye. Wah! The crown prince is too scary. They beg to not become the undeserving victims of his anger. For his own safety, Hidden Flower quickly walked up and beguiled, Your Highness. This subordinate knows that Daybreak Sect has an operations base in Guanlan City. How about this subordinate immediately lead people to raise this base to the ground? How about it? Evil covetous official. Q I think contemptuously glanced at him before nodding in agreement. Your Highness, Hidden Flower's suggestion is quite good. How about we do just that? I will have my subordinates bring people to level Daybreak Sect's operations base in the royal capital then. Hidden Flower thought. What in the world was that DMN contemptuous gaze earlier then? The crown prince glanced at the two of them but responded with silence. A moment later, he languidly said, If this crown prince goes to Xijiu city to personally inspect it, your highness the crown prince mustn't. Hidden flowers expression switched, 
he wished for nothing more than to go up and hug the crown prince's thigh. You've returned to the royal capital for less than two days. You absolutely can't leave at the present, right, right, right. Her Majesty the Queen won't agree to let His Highness leave the capital to see Little Miss at such a dangerous time either. The crown prince's eyes narrowed, and the icy outer corner of his eyes slightly turned up. Inspection. Hugh I Fing really wanted to cry. My esteemed lord. Didn't you just finish your inspection tour and return? Your Highness, how about you let this subordinate leave the capital and inspect the extent of mutated corpses in each city? Hidden Flower volunteered. This subordinate can also bring presents for the little miss on your Highness behalf while passing by. Hugh I think scoffed. I would like to know what way you are following that you could happen to pass by Xijiu City. Then fine the crown prince reluctantly nodded and looked up at the bronze cauldron. It will require at least two more days before it forms shape. Go make preparations now. That child has a hoarding obsession, so do as you see fit. Hidden Flower thought. It turns out this subordinate still has to make a big shopping trip in the royal capital. The crown prince put away the messenger Jay Talisman and stood up to leave the secret room. It appeared Xijiu City was not too safe either. He had received a danger signal from the little miss and immediately felt an abnormal movement from the doppelganger of his soul that was attached to her for rule. In fact, no one knew that the Mo Kingdom's crown prince was an extremely rare mystic weapon engineer. Yes, the for rule, Inky was created by him. When the mystic weapon formed shape, Molian used his essence blood to imbue a minute doppelganger of his soul into it. As a result, when that guy, Li Xiang, delusionally wanted to destroy Kiao Mu's conscious via the ancient mystic mirror, he was immediately sent flying back by the terrifying soul strength that emanated from the doppelganger of Molian's soul. Only the victim, Li Xiang, himself heard the bone-chillingly icy shout of insolence that exploded next to his ears. Only Li Xiang could feel how terrifying the destructive power that accompanied the shout truly was. The crown prince sighed and stepped out of the secret room. In reality, the best method was to move the little miss and her family to the royal capital. However, based on the little miss cold and distant attitude, he would probably provoke her abhorrence if he acted and used some underhanded methods. Hence, he would let nature take its course, chapter 146, really miserable, when the crown prince's personal junior eunuch saw him come out of the inner room, his eyes automatically brightened and eagerly ran over, asking, your highness, are you going to see the officials, those officials were really miserable, they had been waiting since the afternoon, and dinner time had passed already, but His Highness the Crown Prince willfully gave them all the cold shoulder. The Crown Prince glanced at the junior eunuch. You think this Crown Prince is someone so amiable? Your Highness isn't in the slightest. His Highness did not need to say anything else, and the eunuch donned a cold expression and strode outside, taking two steps in place of three. Toward the approaching officials, he said, Sirs, His Highness the Crown Prince is about to sleep. Glang. The officials all heard their hearts drop to the ground and shatter. They had waited from light to dark, but they had thought His Highness the Crown Prince would be charitable and come out to see them. However, he didn't. Hence, if you had hoped that the Crown Prince's black heart would turn a tinge whiter, it was impossible. Marquis of Jaging, WH what should we do? Should we keep waiting or not? He should have learned from the Marquis of Stability and flicked his sleeves and left a long time ago so that he would not have had to foolishly stay here all day. Anger erupted in the Marquis of Jiaging. Tell me, His Majesty wants us to wait here, do you dare to not wait? Question mark. Wait. We will wait here for every day that we don't see His Highness the Crown Prince. An official declared with tears streaming down his face. Even if they waited until weeds were overgrown and wild mushrooms sprang up everywhere, they had to wait. If crying could make the crown prince's heart soften, then they really wanted to fill a river with their tears. They wondered if there was someone in the world who could make his highness the crown prince shed all of his prideful, willful, and headstrong character. That probably was not. Right. Akukiaomu rubbed her little nose. She was sitting on the edge of a soft bed and swinging her short little legs back and forth. Kiaokiao, will you be fine sleeping by yourself? Kiaomu glumly looked at her mother and frantically nodded to indicate that she could. Then alright, 
Mother will check on you later. Why Zaikin pinched her daughter's cheeks and reached out to pick up the young Kiao Lin, who kept making a fuss, before walking outside the room. Mother, I beg you to not come. It was not like she was really a tiny child who needed her mother to come in the middle of the night to tuck in her blanket for her. Kiao Mu rolled onto the bed in a tumble and buried herself into the blankets. She released a big breath of air as she smelled the light fragrance coming from the blanket. She could finally get a good night's sleep, present. The city gate of Xijiu City had been shut already. A carriage was rapidly bounding toward the closed city gate. A person jumped from the carriage and ignored the common people around him who had to sleep outdoors. He dashed to the city gates and forcefully pounded on the gate while shouting, Quick, open the gate, open the gate, open the gate. Didn't you see that it's second Lord Liu who returned to the city? Open, open, quick. The two body cultivators who guarded the city looked down and through the firelight coming from the torch, indifferently stated, the city lord has ordered the entire city to shut its gates before night dawns. We can only open the gates when dawn arrives. Two blind insipid dogs. Don't you know who second young master Liu is? The Liu family's guard who pounded on the gate angrily shouted, How dare you treat the second young master of the Liu estate like this? Quickly open the city gate. The two body cultivators coolly looked at the servant and left the city gate tower, completely unmindful of the shouts and curses coming from the servants of the Liu estate. Second young master, can't we enter? A soft voice came from the carriage. Chapter 147 Fast. A young master wearing luxurious clothes exited from the carriage, waving the folding fan in his hand like a prodigal son. As soon as he deported, he kicked the guard and shouted foully, What's going? What's going on? You can't even do something so simple. What need do I have for all of you? The guard of the Liu estate said with a dejected face, Young master, they say that the city lord's estate laid a strict order to keep the city gates shut after dark. Preposterous. The brocade-robed youth gestured toward the city gate tower with his fan as he angrily shouted, Don't they know who this young master is? Hurry up and open the city gate for me, you band of garbage. Don't you know to think up a way if they won't open the gate? Go, smash that gate open. This young master wants to enter this instant. A corner of the curtains to the carriage was lifted, revealing a tender, gentle, and fair face that was as pure as a lotus flower. The girl gently and softly called, Young Master Liu, the youth in luxurious clothes immediately donned on a salivating face akin to a pig's and walked toward the carriage with a leery smile. Sister Xiao Wan, don't worry, we will be able to enter the city in a moment. When Ruan nodded with a smile, abashedly lowering her head due to the youth's stare, the youth in luxurious clothes felt his heart fill with infatuation. However, he could not do anything in the public eye. So he resignedly gave up and sent another kick to his servant boy. Why aren't you smashing the city gate down for me already? Those insolent vermin. I will make them pay when uncle comes. How dare they make him look bad in front of a beautiful woman. How outrageous. When Rowan put down the curtain. Derision flitting through her eyes. What a brainless guy. If it were not for her complete feebleness and difficult journey. She would not have joined this prodigal young master and rode his carriage to rush to Xijiu City. Several extremely vicious and wicked servant boys dug out clubs from the carriage and really followed the extremely scoundrel charactered prodigal young master to destroy the city gate. There were quite a number of common people gathered by the city gate who were all lining up overnight so that they could enter the city early the next day. When they witnessed this noble young master's absurd behavior. They were all stupefied and were at an utter loss for words. Bang bang bang. The city gate produced loud noises as clubs smacked into it. The common people subconsciously gathered to the two sides and were gesticulating toward the young master while they muttered amongst themselves. Smash. Smash it down. Stronger. Did you losers not eat anything? The young master punted one of the servant boys but and yelled, furious. Knock the city gate down. This young master will take responsibility. At this time, a male peasant loudly driving a cart led by a lazy donkey arrived. The people gathered at the city gate automatically separated into the two sides and the donkey cart was unimpeded as it slowly padded to the back of the carriage. There were 10-20 people squeezed onto the donkey cart, big and small, male and female, old and young 
who nearly in a pile from how tight they sat together. To begin with, a donkey cart was slow, and it had to drag so many people, so the trials of this journey could be imagined. This was the stifling manner that Gia Wenju and made her way here. Currently, half of her was sitting on the legs of a dark-skinned youth with an honest-looking face. The youth might look well-behaved, but his hands did not behave at all. They were brazenly placed on Gia Wenjuan's slim waist and would occasionally play with it. There was very limited space on the donkey cart, so basically everyone, whether male or female, had to sit squeezed together, so even if rage boiled inside Gia Wenjuan, she had nowhere to vent it. Unless she jumped down from the cart and left, she simply had to endure it. Chapter 148 Everyone had their own ulterior motives. The youth who held Gia Wenjuan was none other than the husband she was going to marry in September, 3rd Junior Y. Where clan village was not too far from Kieta village, with only a Fang clan village in between them, but they led wealthier lives than Kieta village. When elderly lady Gia set up this betrothal for Gia Wenjuan back then, she was very satisfied. However, Kiea Wenjuan herself was dissatisfied. She felt like the Wai family had three sons, and she was marrying the youngest son, so after she married into the family, not only would she have to listen to her old mother-in-law's nagging but might also be bullied and repressed by her older sisters-in-law. Moreover, the old madam of the Wai family, Madame Nainu, had a shrewd and ill-disposed character so she was always the one who schemed against other people. Ever since her two daughters-in-law married into the family, they had been tightly controlled by her and were tamed. How could Gia Wenjuan be satisfied with a family like that? She had always been snobbish and what she desired the most was to marry into the city and become the rich and esteemed wife of a young master. Unfortunately, her fate was full of trouble and misfortune. After being heartlessly abandoned by her family, she encountered this crazy family in her escape for her life. The exact night that the old hag of the Y family, Madame Nainu, encountered Gia Wenjuan, she waved her hand and made the incontestable decision to let the two young ones pay their respects to the heaven and earth and get married. She straightly told her that they would only escape to Xijiu City with her in tow if she became a member of the Y family. That night, with the heavens as the roof and the earth as the floor, Without any cover, the impatient third junior Y held their wedding night in advance. This whole way, Kiea Wenjun had been dramatically lamenting about her unfortunate fate. She combed her hair into the bun of a married woman and followed the Y family to Xijiu City with a numb expression. Everyone from the Y family jumped down from the donkey cart and boisterously jostled to the city gate. Currently, the farce of young Master Liu smashing open the city gate had turned more intense. The guards stationed at the city gate had hastily sprinted toward the city lord's estate to report it. The two body cultivators appeared on the city gate tower again and looked down at the ground with an apathetic expression. The people down there, if you impetuously try to destroy the city gate again, don't blame us for taking severe actions. Young Master Liu. When Rowan opened the curtain and gently called, young Master Liu was too brash. When Rowan uncontrollably knitted her brows, she wanted to enter the city, not cause a disturbance. Now that the commotion had grown so big, how will they wind it down? Sister Xiao Wan, don't worry. The city gate will open soon, the youth in luxurious clothes stated with a grin. The second he finished speaking. A row of city guards rushed on to the city gate tower holding bows and arrows and sternly pointed their arrows at the people from the Liu estate. What what are you doing? Question mark young master Liu's voice distorted from fright. He really did not expect that not only would he be blocked outside of the city when he returned to the estate after going on an excursion outside for a few days but that he would also be on the receiving end of arrows. Where did these people get such guts? When Ruwen. Gia Wenjuan spotted the slim woman sitting inside the carriage instantly. When Wen Ruwen looked up and saw her, she sized up the woman in ragged clothes with a married woman hairstyle, and her lips involuntarily turned up with a secretive smile. Oh, it's cousin Wenjuan. Why do you look like this after a few days? When Ruwen ignored Gia Wenjuan's livid face and covered her mouth with her dainty and fair hand, exclaiming with false surprise, Ah, cousin Wenjuan, why are you dressed up like a married woman? I remember your wedding date is in September. At the same time, Kiao Mu was startled awake from her dreamland and shot open her eyes, 
coolly looking at the muslin veil above her. She sat up and turned to listen. She could hear a clamorous racket erupting in the city lord's estate, half a street away. It seemed like the city lord's estate appointed people to leave this late at night. Chapter 149 Summoning Talisman Kiao Mu blinked her pitch black eyes and stood in the dark by herself until the clamor from the city lord's estate melted into the distance. She laid down and closed her eyes to rest, but she found that she could not seem to fall asleep again. Giving up, Kiao Mu got up and lit the candle. Facing the candle, she took out some blank talisman papers and started drawing talismans. She had obtained about 300 blank talisman papers from the talisman shop earlier, but she did not have the time to draw talismans. Since she could not sleep anyway, she got up and found something to occupy herself with. With the talisman pen in hand, Kiao Mu spread open the blank talisman paper and fluidly started drawing on it. She mainly drew some storage talismans so that she would not have to worry about storing items in the future. To her surprise, the first storage talisman that she produced was a fine grade blue talisman. Kiao Mu was startled and her pen paused for a moment before she resumed drawing one talisman after another. However, all of the storage talismans that she drew this time were actually fine grade blue talismans. What did this mean? In her astonishment, Kiao Mu attempted to draw a strength talisman or a speed talisman only to discover that all of the beginner level talismans that she drew were fine grade blue talismans. She attempted to draw a few of those weak protective talismans, peace talismans, dizzying talismans, and mobilization talismans. She consequently confirmed the beginner level talismans that she produced had all leveled up to become fine grade blue talismans. Kiao Mu paused her drawing and entered her conscious, flipping through a jade slip from the golden talisman jade tome. She reread the part, a talisman practitioner encounters challenges unfathomable by the world on their journey. At least three years of practical training are required before a talisman practitioner manages to barely draw a few blue talismans. The success rate of a blue talisman was 1 slash 10 th of that of a yellow talisman. Hence, wasn't this success rate of her fine grade blue talismans a bit peculiar? The total of talismans that she had drawn did not add up to more than 100, right? Yet. The success rate of her blue talismans was already 100%. She felt like her success rate was a bit funny. If other talisman practitioners learned about it, she wondered what they would think. When she retreated from her conscious, two more demonstration talismans floated out of the golden talisman jade tome. Kiao Mu silently accepted and examined them. Beginner level talisman, unconscious talisman, it knocks your opponent unconscious for 15 minutes but opponents one or more levels higher than the user are immune to the effects. Beginner level talisman, summoning talisman, it summons a random animal or plant that exists in the natural world. The effect lasts one day, and the level of the summoned animal or plant will not exceed the summoner's mystic cultivation level by more than three levels. Kiao Mu first put these two talismans to the side before continuing to silently draw her storage talismans. There can never be enough storage talismans. In the future, when everyone went out to search for supplies, they would have to rely on these storage talismans. At that time, she will supply some storage talismans to everyone in the team and they would not have to worry about collecting things anywhere they went. As the little girl cheerfully drew her storage talismans, she was completely unaware that her drawing speed became faster and faster. It originally took her 15 minutes to draw one storage talisman, but now, she was so fluid that she could draw one talisman per minute. It was not until her hand bumped into a pile of blue storage talismans that Kiao Mu snapped out of it and realized, Oh my heavens, I actually drew more than 200 blue storage talismans. She looked up at the sky and noticed that the east was slowly lighting up already. Kiao Mu exhaled and stored the 100 blank talismans into one of the blue storage talismans. Seeing the seven remaining blank talismans on the table, Kiao Mu lightly placed her pen onto the paper, carefully and slowly drawing the final storage talisman. 
The moment she pulled her pen up, her mind shifted slightly. A purple light surfaced from the talisman paper, nearly blinding her eyes. Supreme grade purple talisman. A smile spread across Kiyomu's pink cheeks. This smile was much more natural than any of her previous fake smiles, it was a smile that earnestly came from her heart. It was not stoic or rigid. At that moment, the little wooden doll appeared to light up, and even her countenance became more alive. Chapter 150, Talisman Practitioner. Hello, she placed the 200 plus blue storage talismans that she drew into this supreme grade purple talisman. Kiyomu lightly swiped the surface of the talisman with two fingers, and after a flash of purple light, a four cubic meter storage space appeared in front of her. The talisman energy of a supreme grade purple talisman was four times that of a yellow talisman. This supreme grade purple talisman possessed four cubic meters of space and allowed 400 uses of storing and withdrawing, so it was absolutely worth its price. Kiyomu admiringly looked over it for a long time before placing this supreme grade purple talisman into her waist purse. There were four blank talismans left on the table. Kiyomu grabbed the two brand new talismans and started sketching talismans according to them. She first drew an unconscious talisman but ended in failure. The second time she drew it, a blue light flashed and she produced a beginner level blue unconscious talisman on the spot. The talisman energy of a blue talisman was double that of a yellow talisman. For this talisman, it doubled its effect time. This blue unconscious talisman could make people sleep for 30 minutes. Kiyomu pondered about it while facing the four remaining blank talismans and holding the pen for a moment before giving up on her plan to continue drawing unconscious talismans. She started drawing a summoning talisman instead. From its explanation, this talisman appeared to be quite amazing. Being able to randomly summon something from all of the plants and animals in the natural world, this was quite a large range. It could be normal plants and animals but could also be mystic beasts and evil plants. Everything was possible. Kiyomu took a deep breath and started drawing. She reckoned this summoning talisman exceeded the limits of a beginner level talisman. The penning was abnormally difficult. The slightest careless, wrong stroke and the entire talisman would be ruined. Even with Kiyomu's superfluid skill at drawing talismans, she felt a bit defeated after three successive failures. Eventually, the sun gradually rose outside the window, accompanied by the sound of her parents waking up and walking around. Kiyomu stared at the last blank talisman on the table. Then, she held the pen and calmed her mind before placing it against the paper again. All of the noise outside the window instantly became muted by her senses. There was not the slightest decibel of noise, and Kiyomu's entire person was engrossed in the world of talismans as she focused on drawing this beginner level summoning talisman. The Kiyomu of this moment had completely thrown herself into her task and did not notice the door to her room being pushed open. Wise Ikin was holding her younger daughter, Kiao Lin, as she dazedly stood at the entrance and watched her eldest daughter, who was enveloped by the rays of dawn. Has Kiao Kia woken up? Kiao Zongbang, who was full of energy from a good night of sleep, walked to his wife's side with a beam. When his sight landed on his eldest daughter, he also froze. His daughter, that was a talisman paper laid on the table. Right. His daughter was holding a talisman pen and drawing a talisman with a serious face. This situation was somewhat unbelievable. Kiao Zongban never knew his daughter was actually a talisman practitioner. When she lifted the pen, a faint blue light emitted from the whole talisman. Kiao Mu released a long sigh of relief her tense nerves finally relaxing minutely. She had finally succeeded in making a summoning talisman this time. A smile appeared on her lips again and entered the eyes of her family standing by the door. Kiaul and jubilantly started shouting, Sister, pretty. Sister, break fast. Sister, awesome. Although Xiaolina did not know what praiseworthy thing her sister accomplished, but upon seeing their parents' shocked expressions, she shouted without abandon. Kiyomu started briefly before turning to look at the door. The warm rays of the early morning sprinkled onto her family, making her whole person feel a few degrees warmer. Father, mother, morning. Kiyomu smiled. 